For this lesson we're going to be looking at the graphs of the primary trig ratios. And that would be sine, cosine, and tangent. Now you should already be familiar with sine and cosine and you may very well be familiar with tangent also. The big difference again is that we're switching to radian measure for this course but some of the principles that you've seen in previous courses still apply very well. So before we actually move on to the graphs themselves I just want to remind you uh, or refresh your memory on this little uh, piece of information which is incredibly useful. So if we are assuming or if we are working with uh, a point in the Cartesian plane which has coordinates x and y and we restrict that point so it's always one unit away from the origin if we move this point anywhere in the Cartesian plane that describes what's known as the unit circle. For any angle theta measured from the positive x-axis this is known as an angle in standard position so this would be the initial arm and then this red line would be the terminal arm so the angle between the initial arm and the terminal arm is theta. Well if I imagine applying what I know about right angle trigonometry here I can find out that the sine of theta is equal to sine of theta is equal to this side which is the y coordinate divided by 1. So y divided by 1 that's just equal to y. So y is equal to the sine of theta. And over here we have the x value the x coordinate of this point. So the cosine of theta is equal to x divided by 1 is equal to cosine of theta but of course x divided by 1 is just equal to is just equal to x so I can instead just write that as x is equal to cosine theta. So if I know the coordinates of any point on the unit circle I actually know the values of sine theta and cos theta and that's something we're going to be making use of throughout this unit and throughout trigonometry so it's good to refresh your memory on that particular piece of information. So let's move on to graphing. Actually, okay, before we move on to graphing, here is a unit circle with all of the uh, trigonometric values put in here by way of the coordinates. So uh, this is always cosine and sine, the x coordinate. So all of these are in the form cosine theta, comma, sine theta. Every point is in that form. So for example here we have the angle of zero degrees which is the same as zero radians. The cosine of zero is equal to one, the sine of zero is equal to zero and that applies everywhere. So having a unit circle like this handy at all times is very useful for finding things out. You can see here the angles that correspond to the uh, special triangles and we actually have the special triangles represented in different quadrants as well. So very useful tool when you're doing trigonometry, especially when you have to work with exact values. Okay, so now on to the graphs. So the first thing I'm going to do is in order to graph sine and cosine, these are graphs that the shapes of these should already be familiar to you. And so really we're just re-graphing these. There's nothing new here. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to graph out the first zero to 90 degrees and remembering we're switching over to radians so that means I'm going to start at 0 and I'm going to end at pi by 2 which is the equivalent to 90 degrees and so I'll fill in each of these as I go so the sine of 0 and we could even go back here the sine of 0 here's the angle 0 the sine of 0 is equal to 0 or if you remember just basically what the graph of sine looks like hopefully you remember just that basic shape and so you know it starts at 0, 0. Or you could go ahead and plug that into your calculator, making sure that your calculator is in radian mode. So the sine of 0 is equal to 0. So let's actually fill these out. Sine of 0 is equal to 0. Then we're going to do, and we're just going to use these from smallest to largest. So the next one I can do is pi by 6. And then I can do pi by 4. And then I can do pi by 3 and then I do pi by 2. So for sine 
the sine of pi by 6 comes from this special triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's equal to 1 half, which is equal to 0.5. I'm going to be converting these to decimals just for, uh, if you're graphing, it might be easier to think of these in decimals. The sine of pi by 4, opposite over hypotenuse, that's 1 over root 2, which you may have also seen rationalized as root 2 over 2. And that's approximately equal to 0 0.7. I think one decimal place is actually enough there. So it's actually approximately equal to 0 0.707, but 0 0.7 is fine. The sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. There's no rationalization necessary for that one. And that has uh, the approximate value of 0 0.87. And then the sine of pi by 2, which we don't get from the special triangles, sine of pi by 2, well here's pi by 2, the sine of pi by 2 is the y coordinate, so that's equal to 1, and of course that's what we expected because that is, um, again, if you remember the graph, it starts at 0, and it, the first thing it does is it goes up to a maximum, and that maximum occurs at pi by 2, or if you're thinking back to maybe some previous experience with this, that occurs at 90 degrees. Okay, so we've done the first set of kind of between 0 and pi by 2 or between 0 and 90 degrees for sine. And I could do the same thing for cosine. Cosine starts at a value of 1, so the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. And again, remembering the just the overall graph shape for cosine looks like this, starts at a maximum. And then from there, the cosine of pi by 6, we go here, the cosine of pi by 6 is root 3 over 2, which is approximately equal to 0 0.87. And then the cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2, which is equal to approximately 0 0.7, or 0. Point, I guess if I'm doing two decimal places, it's 0 0.707, which is 0 0.71. For pi by 3, the cosine of pi by 3 is equal to a half which is equal to 0 0.5, and then the cosine of pi by 2 is equal to 0. And so if I were to actually graph these, here is my graph of sine, and you can see here are the points. Now I don't have these labeled, but if we, what was the first point that I did? So that's going to be pi by 6, and then straight down from here, that's going to be pi over 4, down from here, that's going to be pi over 3, there's pi by 2, and there's 0. So those are the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points, and then I would continue, and because there's a, a certain type of, it's not a symmetry, but it repeats itself, I guess you could say there's a symmetry between 0 and pi, and so I know that this one, which was at 0.87, there's another one here at 0.87, this was at 0 0.707, this is at 0 0.707. This one was at 0.5, this is at 0.5, and it continues, and so on. Similarly, I can graph cosine the same way, except for cosine started at 1, and it goes down until it reaches 0 at pi by 2. So you're really using the exact same um, knowledge that you've already gained in the past. The difference is you just have to mentally make that shift over to radian measurement. Now, sine and cosine that's already familiar and you may be familiar with tan you may have looked at it out of curiosity um, but as for tangent the best way to to graph tangent is rather than going straight to a table of values we use the definition of sine over cosine and the reason for this is because we end up doing this um, well we're essentially this is a rational function which is something else we've studied in this course and so we know wherever the denominator has zeros we're going to get vertical asymptotes and wherever the numerator has zeros, we're going to get zeros. And of course, this assumes, I'll just put that here. So this, of course, assumes uh, sine and cosine are not zero at the same time. Because if they were zero at the same time, that would actually produce a hole. But the graph of tangent does not have any holes in it, 
it's it's uh, it does have asymptotes and it does have zeros. So if we use our knowledge of the sine and cosine graphs to do this, if I start here, I've pre-generated my sine and cosine graphs. It's going to be sine over cosine. So the most important thing for graphing this is going to be the vertical asymptotes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a red dotted line and I'm going to look where is cosine equal to zero. Well here it's equal to zero. So I've got a vertical asymptote here and cosine is equal to zero again here. So I'll put in a vertical asymptote and over here. So those are the zeros of cosine and they form my vertical asymptotes. Then I'll switch over to blue for sine. Well where is sine equal to zero? Sine is equal to zero here and sine is equal to zero here and sine is equal to zero here and over here. And then the last thing I need to do without being too precise I mean there's actually one other thing that I that I could do here um, which is is it worth doing? It's not really it's not really a big deal but I guess I'll point it out to you here which is you can see where these ones cross and you can probably see that they cross at pi by 4 they cross halfway between 0 and pi by 2 and this is when both of them have the value of 1 over root 2 but if they both have the same value 1 over root 2 divided by 1 over root 2 well the same divided by the same is equal to 1 over here we have blue which is sine this is going to be negative 1 over root 2 divided by positive 1 over root 2 again that lines up with negative pi by 4 so a no, oh, I didn't do that correctly because it's supposed to be the same divided by the same is going to be equal to 1 so I should have put my dot right there and then over here I'm going to have negative the same divided by positive the same and so that's going to put my dot there and I know I'm going to approach this asymptote going up and, I'm, and the reason why I know that is everything else both blue and red over here sine and cosine they're positive so this stays positive so this is going to curve up towards the asymptote and this one is going to curve down towards the asymptote and that pattern that shape repeats itself and we can figure that out if we go to this next one this is negative the negative same divided by negative same is equal to a positive one and here they're positive and negative which means they're going to be negative one and then from here up towards the asymptote and then here down towards the asymptote and the same thing would be true here so let's put a negative one there the positive one maybe just fits on the end here we're not going to be able to fit the whole thing on there Oh, that wasn't very well done and over here I put a positive one and up towards the asymptote and this one is going to go off the screen so that is our graph for tangent now really important key thing here for tangent is if we look back to our graphs for sine and cosine the period of sine and cosine one full cycle is from 0 to 2 pi so from there to there is a period of 2 pi which we used to refer to as 360 degrees and that's still correct but and the same thing is true for sine for tangent this pattern is repeating essentially the the this pattern is repeating over the width between each consecutive asymptote and that width pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 that's only a width of pi so the period of tangent is actually half the period of sine and cosine and that's something to keep in mind we're going to focus on that a little bit later on as well so there is a computer generated version of the same graph looks a little bit nicer but I would say the graph I came up with by hand was actually a pretty good approximation to that and that's it fairly straightforward lesson just graphing those and making sure we keep focusing on the fact that we're changing our perspective over to radian measure.